Number 75. Salicyclic acid, which is HOC6H4CO2H, and its derivatives have been used as pain relievers for a long time. Salicyclic acid occurs in small amounts in the leaves, barks, and roots of some vegetation, most notably historically in the bark of the willow tree. Extracts of these plants have been used as medications for centuries. The acid was first isolated in the laboratory in 1838. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> let her be. Aspirin was discovered as a result of efforts to produce a derivative of salicyclic acid that would not be irritating to the stomach lining. Aspirin is acetyl salicyclic acid, which is CH3CO2C6H4CO2H. The CO2H functional group is still present, but its acidity is reduced. The Ka value is only 3.0 times 10 to the negative fourth. What is the pH of a solution of aspirin with the same concentration as a saturated solution of salicylic acid? And then they say C part A. So I went back to part A and I got the molarity. So we already know that we're going to be starting with 0 0.01303 molarity of the aspirin, right? The CH3, CO2, C6, H, CO2H. Beautiful. So we don't have to find that out there. And the Ka has dropped a little bit. I do remember in part one, I think this was times 10 to the negative three. So we're talking about a difference of maybe to the 10th power, you know, a, a power of 10. So it's still an acid. This is now acetosalicyclic acid. So let's just see what the balanced equation is. We have a Ka value. So we got to find the um, balanced equation. So C, H3, CO2, C6, H4, CO2, H. And this is a weak acid, right? So we're, it's going to be at equilibrium. And now they still said that we have that carboxy group. That's this group right here. And that's the hydrogen in which it's going to act as the proton. And it's going to you know, fly away. So the conjugate base would be everything except that. So CH3, CO2, C6, H4, CO2 minus, and that's aqueous. And then we have plus the H plus. That's aqueous. All weak acids and weak bases that you start off with is also aqueous and we're ready to go. Now, we're starting off with the initial concentration. So anytime that you have weak acids or weak bases and you have an initial concentration, just like in letter A, we got to do a nice table. So I'm going to be going like this, right? ICE. The initial concentration that we have is what we had in part A, 0 0.01303. We did not start with any of the conjugate base, it, base, nor did we start with the H+. Plus. So 0 and 0. C stands for change. So if you start off with zeros, remember, you could only go up from there. So the products would have to be plus, and the reactants would have to be minus, and we don't know how much yet. So we're just going to say minus x, plus x, and plus x. It's all one-to-one. -one ratio, so we don't have to deal with any numbers in front of the X. And then the E stands for equilibrium, so you just pull together the initial and the change. So 0 0.01303 minus X, 0 plus X is just X, and 0 plus X is just X. Now you might be saying, why are we doing this in the first place? We want the pH. Well, remember, pH is correlated with the H+. Plus. And the H plus concentration is going to come when we find that equilibrium value. So in essence, we have to find that H plus value out first, then we can find the pH. Okay, so let's do some shifting over here. I'm gonna move this all the way to this side. And now I'm gonna write my Ka value. And maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna box this off just so that we don't get confused. Okay, there we go. So Ka equals the 2 on the top divided by the 1 down below. So 
it would be the concentration of the conjugate base with the H plus divided by this, all at equilibrium. So it would be X times X divided by, now here's the thing, we like to maybe scoot around this negative X issue here, or minus X issue. If we keep this whole thing down below, we're going to have to do a quadratic. We try to avoid that at all cost. So we do a little trial and error to see if we can negate this minus x. Because with low Ka values, this one is 10 to the negative fourth. It's kind of low. Eh, not really, but I mean, we might get away with it, but who knows. That just means that at equilibrium, you have mostly reactants. So if you started with all reactants and you're left with most reactants, the drop wouldn't be a big drop, it would be like a small one. And the drop is, you know, talking about the change, the minus x. So if you have just a small drop, maybe this doesn't even matter. So let's see. Let's see if we could get by it. We do a little check once we solve for x. And for right now, I'm just going to say that this Ka value, we actually know the Ka value, it is... 3.0 times 10 to the negative fourth. So, cross multiply, right, this times this, equals x times x is x squared. So, x squared equals, let's see, 3 times 10 to the negative fourth times 0 0.01303, and I get 3.909 times 10 to the negative sixth. We're going to square root. That gets rid of that. And since this can be one of our answers, eh, not really, it's not the pH, but we're getting there. I'm going to cut this off a little bit. So 0 0.001977. Okay. Now here calls the 5% rule. This is how we're going to determine whether we, you know, whether our math was okay. What you're going to do is you're going to take the answer that you found, so 0 0.001977, and we're going to divide it by the initial. It's always by the initial, 0, 3. And we're going to times it by 100 because it's a percent. If this answer is 5 or less, that means that we could get away with not putting in that minus x into our equation. But if this answer is above 5%, we have to go back and do the math with the actual minus x. So let's see. I kind of know what's going to happen, but I need to see it for certain. Ay, this is 15%. So way higher than 5%. It does not pass the 5% rule. So that means that we have to just go back to this and put that minus x in there. So let's just do that. I'm just going to clean this up. So goodbye. Goodbye. The Ka value is still there, but now I'm just going to pull this out, and I'm going to say that we have to keep these minus x's in here. And then it's got to go in here. Now we got to do the math again to find the real x value. So all this is going bye-bye. Okay. So remember now, when we're multiplying 3 times 10 to the negative 4th times this, in parentheses, we're distributing. So this times by this number, and then that times by the x value. So it would be x times x is x squared. x squared equals, I think I did, what was the answer to that? 3 times 10 to the negative 4th times that number is 3.3. 3, where was it? Yeah, 3.909 times 10 to the negative 6th minus 3.0 times 10 to the negative 4th x. And here's the problem. We have an x squared and an x value. So the only way that we could go about this problem is to do the quadratic equation. We remember what the quadratic equation is. It's this one right here. Oh, yeah. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a squee all... 4a squee. 4ac all over 2a. 
But in order to do that, remember, we have to get these terms onto the x squared side. So let's just do that quickly. So instead of minus 3 times 10 to the negative 4th x, I'm going to plus 3.0 times 10 to the negative 4th x. Bring that over times 10 to the negative 4th x. And then if I can just, whoop, I will clean this up in a little bit. And then this, it's a positive number, so we have to minus 3.9 times 10 to the negative 6. So minus 3.9 times 10 to the negative 6. This goes bye-bye. This goes bye-bye. This whole side equals 0 now. So we have basically 0 equals x squared. Then comes this. So I'm just going to move this up now. And then we have this random number at the end. And now I'm going to get rid of this. So just pause the video if you want to look at, you know, this information. And now let's just label our a, b, and c. Remember, the a value is right, be uh, right before the x squared, but there's nothing there. That means there's a 1. So a equals 1. b equals the number in front of the x. We have to take that positive into consideration. So b is... 3.0 times 10 to the negative fourth. And then C, got to take that sign into consideration. The C is just the random number. This would be a negative 3.9 times 10 to the negative sixth. All these A, Bs, and Cs, plop it right in there. So let's see. X equals negative B, so that becomes a negative, 3.0 times 10 to the negative fourth plus or minus the square root. And let me just see if I can make that. Oh, that's actually a pretty good one. <laughs> B squared, so the same number, 3.0 times 10 to the negative fourth, that's squared, minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is that negative 3.9 times 10 to the negative sixth, and close that on up, and all of this, maybe I'll do it like that, all of this is divided by, oh boy, <laughs> divided by 2a, so 2 times 1. I guess I'm just going to pull this over a little bit, and just work off that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this uh, number, under the radical, well, we could actually do 2 times 1, 2 times 1, we know what that is. That's just times by, that's just 2, right? Now I'm just going to plug this into my calculator and get just one number under the radical. So we have 3 times 10 to the negative 4th, that's squared. Then I'm going to do 4 times negative 3.9 times 10 to the negative 6th. And then I'm going to take the first number and subtract it by the second number. Okay. So I'm going to erase everything on the bottom. And my answer that I get is 1.569 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now we're going to take the square root of that. And we get a big number. I try not to round uh, because it's not, the, it's not the, the right answer yet. So 0 0.003. Nine six one zero six one. I guess we could just leave it as six. Okay, this two comes over here. I can get rid of this. Now we have two decisions. I could either split this up and say negative three times ten to the negative fourth plus this number, or I could do negative three times ten to the negative fourth minus this number. The key is to remember that there is no such things as negative molarities. These x values, which is what we're trying to solve for, has to be a positive number. So one of them is going to give me a negative value, and the other one is going to give me a positive. If I'm already starting with the negative, I don't want to subtract by another number, because then I'm going to become more negative. So I know that the negative answer is out. It would have to be positive. But you could do both of them, if you want, to just see the difference. But we're going to go with the positive one here. 
So negative 3 times 10 to the negative 4th plus 0 0.00396106. Okay, let's erase that and put the right answer. 0 0.00366106. And we're going to just take that all and divide it by 2. And we finally get an x value as our h plus. So 0. Point, uh, we'll say 0. 0.00183. And that's what the H plus concentration was. Remember, we wanted the pH, so we wanted that H plus. So this equals the H plus concentration. And now if I just move this formula over, because we're finally there, guys. pH equals the negative log of the H plus. The pH is going to be the negative log of 0 0.00183. And maybe, if I can, let's just scooch this over. So here we go. pH equal to, let's see how more basic this is. The uh, salicylic acid was, I think, roughly a 2 pH. I think it was 2.3. Now it is... Ah, <laughs> 2.74. So it's still very, very, very acidic. Very, very acidic. And that's why, you know, some patients, I think there still is some type of stomach discomfort when taking aspirin. So they raise the pH a little bit, but not by much. But this is the answer, guys. I really hope this is uh, helping you out. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And let's keep studying hard. Uh, good luck on your future tests and quizzes. And I'll talk to you all later. If you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.